WABC, New York. Mr. Alice! I'm ready, Portland. Let's go. It's Texaco time with George Jessel, Josephine Houston, Portland Hoffa, the Texaco Workshop players, Al Goodman and his orchestra, and starring Fred Allen. <laughs> Jimmy Wallington saying hello for Texaco dealers from coast to coast and inviting you to enjoy Fred Allen in the Texaco Star Theater as a special guest of the Texaco dealer in your own neighborhood. It's his way of telling you that you're welcome. Welcome to all the skilled help he can give to keep that car of yours delivering your essential transportation. Make your tires last longer by letting your Texaco dealer give them a regular checkup on pressure and condition. And make your car last longer and run more economically by seeing that it gets regular, systematic lubrication and maintenance from your Texaco dealer. It's his job to help you care for your car for your country. December is a month of cold weather. Don't forget to let your cat in on winter nights or you will wind up like this program with a frozen puss. And here he is, Fred Allen. Thank you, thank you, and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Jimmy, I must say from that introduction tonight, you are, uh, are as sharp as either end of a boiled potato tonight. <laughs> frozen puss, are you kidding? <laughs> well, I'm from Hollywood, Fred. I can't stand cold weather. Well, you guys from California, Jimmy, every time you're all alike, every time Claude Rains gets east of Chicago, he turns to sleep. Claude Sleep, they call him around Indiana. <laughs> a little cold and Veronica Lake starts looking like a rink when she gets here. I don't know what it is. Mr. Allen! Well, Portland, gee whiz. <laughs> well, Portland, you're just in time uh, to participate here. How does your family react to cold weather? Well, my uncle... Phil went to a football game last week. Yeah? It was so cold in the stadium, one team froze in a huddle. Froze in a huddle, huh? No kidding. The other team was using the ice tea formation. The ice tea formation. <laughs> yes, they say that after this, all the cold spells will start from Washington. They've frozen prices and they've frozen wages. There's nothing left to freeze now but the people. So the weather from now on will all emanate from a certain point. And speaking of frost... Did you hear Jack Benny's program tonight? Did you folks hear me? Why, no, friend. What happened? Well, uh, very little, but I shall give it to you the or in the order in which it didn't occur. <laughs> the program opened up with a commercial about grape nuts. You see, a program like that you can't take on an empty stomach. They give you a little grape nut commercial. And the first part of the show was a farewell to Phil Harris. You know, Phil and his whole band uh, have joined the Merchant Marines. I guess after working... Uh, thank you very much. Uh, <laughs> Phil's commanding officer waiting for him to get here. <laughs> but uh, uh, after working with Benny six years for peanuts, I guess navy beans look pretty good to Phil. <laughs> and the second part of the program, Benny was packing up to come to New York. You know, he's taking all of his heavy clothes in case it's cold here. Why should Benny worry about the cold? He's the only man I know who can take off his hair and use it for a muffler. So <laughs> And the program finished with a sketch. In the sketch, Benny caught two Japs this week. Remember last week he caught Rommel on the program? Well, next week, uh, next week when he gets here to New York, the next thing he'll ca he catches will be something from the sponsor, but we won't know about that. That won't be on the air. Well, so much for the old Beverly Heel, and now let's turn to the, uh, to the new. What's the newsreel for tonight, Mr. Allen? Well, during the past week, Portland, the president and the mayor of New York have both given the country their recipes for stretching coffee. You've perhaps seen it in the paper, huh? Well, tonight the question is, who makes the better coffee, President Roosevelt or Mayor LaGuardia? <laughs> who are you going to ask? Well, whenever I want to know how America is reacting to an important issue of the day, I just drop around to Allen's Alley, Portland. <laughs> Here we 
are. Alan's, uh, uh, Alan's Alley, Portland. Now what happened? Well, I just knock on three or four doors down here and see how the people feel about this coffee question. I'll try this house here. What is it, another one of them surveys? Uh, yes, sir. Okay, I know the whole routine, mister. Well, I... Uh... My name is John Doe. I'm married. I have one wife and 2.6 kids. I... <laughs> Well, I, uh... I give all my scrap into the scrap drive. Half of the scrap is still laying over in flushing. I hear the mayor is going to have a come and get your scrap back day. <laughs> but you, you... I keep my lights dim. I'm conserving my rubber. And my favorite radio program is Major Boat. In other words... I am the average man. I see. Now, what is it you want to know, brother? Well, last week, President Roosevelt and Mayor LaGuardia... Yeah, I know. They both give their recipes for coffee. Well, what I want to know is... I know. I tried them both. Well, which coffee did you like better? The president. But I won't admit it. Why not? I'm a Republican. <laughs> well, I'll, um, I'll see who's in this next house here. No. Uh, I'm taking a survey, madam. What is your name, please? The name is Mrs. Pansy Nussbaum. Uh, <laughs> did, you, uh, did you read about the president's and Mayor LaGuardia's coffee hands? Both coffees I'm trying. Well, which uh, which did you like better? Both coffees you can keep. It. <laughs> they are both bad. The president's coffee is tasting like low tide at Coney Island. <laughs> Coffee could be somebody's putting shellac in the Pepsi Cola. <laughs> well, what are you? What are you using for coffee at home? I am mixing old coffee grounds with Lux. Old coffee grounds. <laughs> well, how does the how does the Lux work out? The coffee has a head on it. <laughs> yes. And every night, uh huh, I am dreaming of a white Christmas. <laughs> Uh, drinking Lux in your coffee hasn't bothered you otherwise? Only when I talk. The neighbors are calling me Bubbles Nussbaum. <laughs> well, perhaps if you tried uh, Sanka. You're welcome. Uh, <laughs> well, that, uh, that takes care of Mrs. Nussbaum. I'll try this tenement here. Oh. Uh, yeah. <laughs> what is your name, sir? Uh, Socrates Mulligan. Socrates Mulligan. Yeah. I'm uh, I'm conducting a coffee yeah, survey. Yeah, I know. The wall just in. You know, I heard you talking to Mrs. Nussbaum. Well, have you uh, have you done anything about the coffee suggestions? Well, uh, like everybody else, I tried both methods. Well, what uh, what luck did you have? The president's coffee tasted like something you'd get if you milked a rubber reindeer. <laughs> Coffee? Well, uh, I tasted like licking the dew off a glue factory roof. <laughs> well, what have you, uh, what have you personally been drinking for, for Java, Socrates? Uh, well, I tried putting my vest in a percolator and boiling out the coffee stain. <laughs> well, how, uh, how was that? Well, uh, the coffee didn't taste bad, but it had a tweed flavor and there was buttons on it. <laughs> Well, why didn't you, uh, why don't you try the president's method? The president uses the, the same grounds day after day. So did the Brooklyn Dodgers, but what did it get them? <laughs> well, don't you, uh, don't you think the president should make coffee? Oh, if a fellow's wife ain't home much, he's got to make coffee. <laughs> I see, uh... I see your point. Yeah. Uh, if the president keeps making coffee, he ought to change the name of the capital. Change the name of the capital? How do you mean, Socrates? Uh, well, instead of the White House... Yes? They ought to call it the Maxwell House. <laughs> well, there's only one more... One more house in Allen's Alley, Portland. It's a flop house. We'll see who's in here. Greetings, friends. Stoop and enter. Welcome to Hokum Hacienda. Staff Openshaw. You have come to pick up my new batch of poems. Are you still composing? Constantly. <laughs> have you heard, said the chickadee to the little flea, I won't bite you if you don't bite me? 
No, I haven't heard that. Or, uh, she was only a pool player's sweetheart, but she knew he had something on the ball? <laughs> no, I haven't heard that. They, uh, they call my mother Mrs. Five by Five because she has no six appeal? Now, wait. <laughs> Tonight we <laughs> Tonight we are trying to get reactions to the president's and Mayor LaGuardia's coffee recipes. Precisely why I opened my door. I have contrived the coffee song. A coffee song? How does it go? The uh, Allen Alley Cats will sing it. Let us first, gentlemen. When you try to buy coffee today, you get that old feeling. The grocer has one thing to say, and it's that old feeling. The president and the mayor cook their own brew. If they can make their coffee, so can you. But when for mocha or java, you get that old yearning. And your silex is empty, then it's no use burning. If you want coffee to drink today, you're in a spot with that old ceiling. You're holding the pot. Thank you, Paul Cat and the Alan Alley Cat. And now, ladies and gentlemen, our singing guest, the young lady we haven't discovered. You've enjoyed her many times on the air, I know. I'd like to have you meet Miss Josephine Houston. And Miss Houston is going to sing Granada. Miss Josephine. <laughs> Miss Houston, that was lovely. And now, Jimmy, if you'd like to say a word or two. Oh, I don't know, Fred. No? All I feel like saying is... Gosh, why? Why, Jimmy? Oh, gee, Fred, when I think how many patriotic American car owners are saving gasoline and rubber, but still wasting their cars... Wasting why... their cars? How do you mean, James? Well, by neglect, Fred. You know, a lot of drivers forget that even when a car isn't used much, the tires get soft and batteries run low, harmful sludge may form in the engine, especially in wintertime, and... Oh, what's the use of talking about it? Well, don't be a defeatist, Jimmy. Buck up now and tell our listeners how to correct this situation. Okay? I'll take a stab at it. Good. Jimmy, uh, you'll be the knife of the party. You're going to take a stab at it. I nearly missed the whole thing there. <laughs> Listen, ladies and gentlemen, don't let neglect sabotage your essential transportation. 
Tomorrow, before winter weather puts an additional strain on your car, have your Texaco dealer get it in fighting trim. He'll put the right winter grade of insulated Haviland motor oil in the engine. Winter Texaco gear lubricants in transmission and differential. And protect the 40 vital points of the chassis with a Marfac job. Plus that, he'll give skilled Texaco attention to radiator, tires, battery, air cleaner, spark plugs, and every other point where neglect could put your car out of action. See your Texaco dealer tomorrow. That was just a beam from the new Crosby Hope picture, Moonlight Becomes You, a number from the Crosby Hope picture, The Road to Morocco. It is partly played by Al Goodman and his orchestra. I say, wait, 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 wait a minute. Who, who wants Philip Morris? His draft board. <laughs> Under 38, eh? I'm glad to hear that. Well, we should uh, we should put a weather strip on this program. The strangest things... Uh, yes, Portland, something you want When you get through with your strip tonight, may I have it? Uh, for what, Portland? I have to collect waste paper to make a big stomach for Mama. A big stomach? Mm-hmm. During the Christmas rush, Mama and I are working at Macy's. And your mother has to have a big stomach? Yes. Mama's a Santa Claus. Oh, a Santa Claus. Well, she has the whiskers for it, I will say. Uh, tell me, are you working in the store, too? Yes, I'm in the ladies' hosiery department. Oh, that's nice. I stand by with a squirt gun. A squirt gun in the hosiery department? They're liquid stockings. Oh, liquid stockings, I see. If a woman gets a run, I squirt on another stocking. Well, that's nice work, I imagine. But I have to get busy now, Portland. I... Oh, look, I said, come in. Yes? I'm from the telephone company. Well, our bill is paid here, I yeah, think. Yeah, well, it ain't that. Mr. George Jessel, the big Broadway star, is coming on this program tonight. Well, so what? Every time Jessel gets on the radio, he calls up his mother. Well? Tonight he ain't, brother. I'm taking out this phone. <laughs> well, that's one relief. Jessel can't call his mother up on this program. That'll be a novelty. Mr. Jessel is a big star on Broadway now, isn't he? Oh, yeah, Showtime. That show with Georgie Jessel and Jack Haley is one of the biggest hits. Oh, who is this? Come in. Don't nobody move. Line up against the wall. Now, wait a minute. Just a minute. What is this? I'm Mr. Jessel's bodyguard. With a body like Jessel's, he needs a guard? <laughs> he needs a chiropractor, you should tell me. Jessel carries a lot of dough and jewelry on him these days. Oh, ho. I don't want no monkey business when Mr. Jessel gets here. Uh-huh. I got X-ray eyes I can see right through you. Yeah? Yeah. You had pork chops for dinner. Uh-huh. <laughs> no, why, is, why is Mr. Jessel coming tonight? I right, well, he called me up, Portland. He said he has to see me. It's very important. Do you think Mr. Jessel's changed since he's rich? Oh, no. Money means nothing to Jessel. Why, when he plays pinball, he doesn't even bother to tip. He throws it around these days. Yes? Is this Mr. Jessel's studio? Well, who are you? I am Mr. Jessel's valet. I say, where's the Davenport? What, uh, what Davenport? Mr. Jessel has to relax at the microphone. Well, he only has to stand up for ten minutes. Mr. Jessel can't possibly stand up for ten minutes, old boy. Why not? With his solid gold underwear, Mr. Jessel's legs give way. <laughs> wait a minute, wait a minute. What is that stuff you're squirting around in here? This is moth spray. Moth spray? Yes, Mr. Jessel is wearing his mink windbreaker tonight. We can't take any chances. Heavens, the master's at the door. Well, I'll open it. Mr. Jessel's theme song, please. <laughs> bonsoir, madame, bonsoir, monsieur. Georgie Jessel. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, bonsoir, madame, bonsoir, monsieur. Bonsoir, madame, bonsoir, monsieur. Oh, yes, yes. Oh, monsieur. Where, Alan? Oh, mon cher ami, comment allez-vous ce soir? Well, très bien, Georgie. Je désirais remercier vous pour revenir mon programme ce soir. Ah, ha, ha. How are you, Fred? <laughs> Well, uh, tonight the world previews the new Jessel, Georgie. It sure is strange to see you in the money. Yeah, well, Fred, it couldn't happen to a nicer guy, huh? <laughs> Today, you are the toast of Broadway. And only last year, you were just a crumb. <laughs> yes, Fred, the Jessel of yesteryear, like Cassius, had a lean and a hungry look. This is Shakespeare, Julius Caesar, Act 3, Scene 2. Austin Wells just phoned me. Ah, but look at you tonight, Georgie. Ain't I nice? Look, I'm a regular Mo Brummel. 
Look at that tuxedo. Yes, sir. It's the first time in my life that a tuxedo fits me. This one, I own. <laughs> is that a silk shirt you have on, Georgie? Well, of course it is. I have my own silkworms now. Your own silkworms? Oh, and look, smell my breath. Sin Sin. Gad, you are in the money. Yeah. <laughs> Look here, look at the vest pocket. Here, here. Cigars with gold tips. Yeah, on this side, 50 cent cigars, on this side, 75 cent cigars. Oh, you, uh, you need two brands? With the you? 50 cent cigars, I like the 75 cent cigars. <laughs> Want to see something? Yeah, what do I get? Take this cigar. Here, right. <laughs> here, look at this ring. Say, what's that hole in the center, Georgie? Oh, the diamond got a little dirty. I threw it away. I don't want to. <laughs> Georgie, I have never seen such affluence. Well, Fred, I've stuck it rich, and I can make you rich, too, because I'm here to make you an offer. Well, I'm doing all right in radio, Georgie. I'm making what used to be a living. Radio. Yeah, chicken feed radio. Look at me. Today, I own a limousine. From a push cart to an aid cart in six months. <laughs> I know, I know I haven't got my own silkworms, Georgie. I haven't got sin sent on my breath, but I'm happy in radio. Yeah, but radio's going to get you in a rut, Fred. A rut? Yes, every week in radio, it's the same thing. With Bob Hope, Skinny Ennis always needs blood. That's true, true, true. <laughs> this fella, Ned Smelton, uh, every week, I do it, I do it. And Cantor with his four daughters. It's uh, five daughters, Georgie. Yeah, well, you can see when I stop listening to him. <laughs> programs are different, Georgie. No, they're different. I'm your friend, Fred, and I can tell you. Now, for instance, that fat actor, that false staff on your program, mm -hmm. every week with those broken down poems. Don't roll that stranger's dice, mother. They're loaded, and so are you. <laughs> it's funny. It's funny, isn't funny, it, Georgie? Funny, funny. This is a way to talk about mother. Mother is loaded. <laughs> if I talk like that about my mother, she hit me over the head with my Uncle Milford. <laughs> Radio has no sentiment, Fred. No sentiment, Georgie. How can you say that? Haven't you ever heard the Goodwill Hour? No. Why, last week, case number 149 would have torn your heart out, Georgie. Yes, uh, well, you I'm like sentiment. No, radio is not for you, Fred. You used to be a star in the theater. The little show, three's a crowd. Fred, you've just got to come back. Come back where? Give up the radio. I'll put you in my show. Showtime at the Broadhurst Theater. The biggest sensation on Broadway. The show is a big hit, huh? Big hit. Luckily, I happen to have the newspaper notices right here in my pocket. There you are. Uh, oh, the notices are a little dirty, aren't they, Georgie? Well, I'm carrying them around since September. Oh, man. <laughs> I'll have them dry tea. Look at this. Look at this. The Hoboken Herald, just as a cyclone of laughs. The Jewelers Gazette, just as a diamond in the rough. Look at here. The Stonemason's Journal, Jessel is dynamite. <laughs> Here's the New York Times. Says, nah, who reads the Times? <laughs> Why, well, I, saw, I saw a great review of Showtime in the Reader's Digest. The Reader's Digest? So what did it say? It said, ha. Huh. What? <laughs> Critic only saw one act, I guess, you know. Two acts would have been, ha, ha. <laughs> Well, if your show is so good, Georgie, why do you need me in it? Well, I'll tell you the truth. They got one weak spot on the show, Fred. They send me some Hollywood comedian. It was Hooley, Healy, Hooley. Oh, ass. you you mean uh, Jack Haley? Hey, it's, that sounds like it. This is it, yes, Haley, Haley. Well, why, all the New York critics said that Jack Haley was terrific in the show. One paper, the Irish World, said that he was better than you. <laughs> one... <laughs> One paper, and those jokes that that Haley tells, listen to this. Come on, laugh, folks. I'm an A1. That's one of the jokes. <laughs> she used to be a sailor sweetheart. Now she's an officer's mess. <laughs> this you call comedy? Well, I can't take Jack Haley's job. He's a nice guy, Georgie, and besides, he has muscle. Now, look, muscle, muscles. You leave Haley to me, Fred. You and I'll be the stars of that show. Well, are you changing anything else in the show? Yes, I'm putting in a new opening act. Sam and his singing sturgeon. Singing sturgeon? Singing sturgeon. You see, the sturgeon sings underwater. When the bubbles come up and break, it's a song. Good, good. Uh, very good. And I got something else. Uh, you wrote that, you know. I got something else, Fred. <laughs> I should have died with it, too. <laughs> I have the greatest novelty personality in the whole world signed up. Greatest novelty who, Georgie? A man welder. A man welder? <laughs> You and I can't work together, Georgie. What can we do? We can do something that the country has been waiting for, Fred. We can sing a sweet, sentimental song. You think audiences want sentiment, Georgie? I know they do, Fred. People are tired of the songs they're hearing today. I got a zoot suit with a felt belt. <laughs> Beat me, Mama, with the Hudson tube. <laughs> 
sing an old song. Yes, huh? we'll take the public back to a gentler era, the day of the farthingale, the pen wiper, and the swirling cape. But what song can we sing? Well, how about when you're a long, long way from home? You mean... Well, we'll do it. We can do... We can sing the chorus together, and then I'll do a dramatic recitation. Uh-huh. Then we'll both come back for one of those big finishes. All right? right, I'll get everything set for you, Georgie. Mr. Goodman, may we borrow a violin player and a cellist to play for Mr. Jessel? Yeah, but what, what about for the recitation, the soft music, the woodwind? The woodwind? Well, I'll play my clarinet for you, Georgie. I'll take care of this personally for you tonight. Yes, so this, uh... This is a clarinet? Yes, Benny Goodman threw it out in the scrap drive, and I was going by, so I happened to pick it up. Fine. Well. I'm ready. I'm ready, George. Wish I was back with Haley. Well, all right, we'll do it. Give Mr. Goodman the cue. All right, Mr. Goodman, you're a long, long way from home, if you please. When you're a long, long way from home, it makes you feel like you're alone. It's hard to find a pal that's true, that you can tell your troubles to. And when you write a letter home, your mother's voice Rings in your ears And then you cross the seas with kisses What a strange world it is Of a threat Then you dot the eyes with tears You miss the love you always know When you're a long, long way from Why did I wonder? Oh, why did I stray? That is the question I ask every day. Further away with the clarinet, please. Milestones are milestones when you start to roam. Ah, but boys, wait till you're far from home. Softer with the clarinet. The violin player pushed my arm, George. A mistake. I'll take it up. The union should break your leg. Go ahead. <laughs> in the eyes of the world, you may seem very small, but in the eyes of your mother, you're as big as them all. You go out in the world with one thought on your mind. Where can I find a pal? And you've left one. To... Fred, can't you... Can't you play the cello for heaven's sake? A fly got on the music, Georgie, but I played him. Oh, you miss the love you always know. Beat, beat, when you're a long, long way from home. Thank you, George Jessel, for your help tonight. Our guests next week, ladies and gentlemen, will be Jack Haley and Christina Carroll. This is Fred Allen speaking for Texaco dealers from coast to coast and reminding you to drive under 35 to save rubber and to drive into your Texaco dealers regularly to have your tires checked. Remember, you're welcome. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System.